Hi gang, and my radar meteorologist Matthew Capucci. We've all heard of microbursts, but have you ever heard of a heat burst? They're exactly what they sound like, a sudden gust of very warm winds, often in the dead of night. Here's what makes them work. By the way, if you're joining us on YouTube, be sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel. We have tons of great explainers like this one that you won't want to miss. June 28, 2019 began normally in Monticello, Iowa. There were a couple of dying thunderstorms in the area, but temperatures were modest, upper 60s to around 70. But between 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m., the temperature spiked from 70 degrees to 90 degrees. The culprit? A heat burst. Heat bursts come from sinking air. We have to discuss a process called adiabatic compression. Close to sea level, ambient air pressure increases because the air is being squished by the weight of the atmosphere above it. The farther aloft you go, though, the less air there is. That's why some Olympians and marathon runners train in places like Colorado and why you might get altitude sickness visiting Bolivia. As you ascend higher, there's less atmosphere left above you, so the air is less dense and it's thinner and air pressure decreases. Now let's say you have a pocket of sinking air. As it gets closer to the surface, that parcel gets squeezed by increasing ambient air pressure around it. That compression warms the air parcel. If the pocket of air descends rapidly from a high enough altitude and doesn't have time to mix out its warmth with the surrounding atmosphere, you can wind up with a significant and very impressive heat burst. There are many legitimate and some seemingly apocryphal reports of heat bursts from around the world. Whether underground sites have verified heat bursts in Kimberley, South Africa that raised the temperature from 66 to 110 degrees in just five minutes time. We also have reports from Georgia in 1860 of a heat burst only 100 yards wide that brought the temperature to 120 degrees. A similar report from Lake Whitney, north of Waco, Texas on the night of June 15, 1960 cites hurricane force gusts and temperatures topping 110 degrees. And here's a crazy one. Check out this temperature trace from Sioux Falls, South Dakota on the morning of August 3rd, 2008. At 4.56 a.m., the temperature was 75 degrees, but by 5.27 a.m., 98.6 degrees. Moreover, the dew point plummeted from 66 to 46. Here's a chart I made of the observations from that day. Let's go to a more recent and beautifully documented example from Chandler, Oklahoma on the morning of May 14, 2020. Now, there were collapsing thunderstorms in the area, but I first want to start off by looking at a map of wind speeds collected across Oklahoma, taken by the Oklahoma State Mesonet. Notice anything that stands out? Gusts of 65 miles per hour in Chandler. As that storm collapses, the air below becomes more dense and gets splat right at the surface. Now we can see air temperature. Everybody else is in the upper 50s to lower to mid 60s. Then we have a reading of 81 degrees in Chandler. The dew point, a measure of how much moisture is present in the air, is also a lot lower than surrounding areas. Chandler's at 49 and everybody else is in the upper 50s to lower 60s. Remember, when a heat burst occurs, air sinks, fans out, hence the gusty winds, warms up and dries out. Here's a trace showing data from that morning. You can see the temperature spiking and the humidity plummeting. It's not just in the US and Africa that heat bursts occur. There was even an example from the United Kingdom on July 25th, 2019. At the time, a major heat wave was gripping Europe, claiming more than 1,400 lives. Helsinki, Finland set a record at 91.8 degrees, and France soared to 114.8, setting a national all-time record. Lingen, Germany also set a national all-time record at 108.7 degrees. But about that heat burst, Lincolnshire in the East Midlands of England jumped from 71.6 degrees to 89.6. Here's a temperature trace from the UK Met Office. They blame a heat burst from a collapsing thunderstorm. Now, why are collapsing thunderstorms important and why do heat bursts often occur at night? The answer lies in something we call an inversion. At night, the ground often cools off faster than the air above it. That means the air at the middle levels of the atmosphere is milder than at the surface. As such, if a thunderstorm collapses, what goes up must come down and that pushes pockets of mild mid-level air down to the ground. That air is already warmer, and then it warms even more thanks to the adiabatic compression. It's no wonder that air temperature can rise 20 or 30 degrees or more in just a matter of minutes. It's especially helpful if you have dry air near the surface, since then any moisture in the parcel evaporates, helping its downward acceleration and it to warm up even more. That's because dry air is less dense. Here's some data on how frequently heat bursts occur. It's taken from a paper by McPherson et al., published by the Royal Meteorological Society in 2010. It looks at heat burst events in Oklahoma from 1994 to 2009. There were 207 of them studied. The authors concluded that 70% of heat bursts were observed between 6 p.m. and 2 a.m. local time. 
Outside of meteorology, there's something poetic and nostalgic about heat bursts. It appears frequently in literature in a symbolic sense, as if representing a visitation from the supernatural. There's something comforting and simultaneously out of place about a sudden warm wind in the middle of the night. It's as if the atmosphere is sentient. Peak heat burst season will be forthcoming in May as severe weather erupts over the plains. Getting one is rare, but they do happen, and now you know why. I'm my writer meteorologist Matthew Capucci. Follow My Radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.